No. No, no, no. There was no way Declan had just heard the sound of his car tire popping. It was clearly just something he ran over, or maybe it was the car next to him, or... Declan felt his steering getting pulled to one side. He popped his tire. Declan pulled over to the side of the road, and then very quickly realized that he had, for some forgotten reason, taken the spare tire from his car out ages ago, and apparently never put it back. Wonderful. He had no choice now but to call his brother and have him pick him up. He took out his phone, dialed his brother's phone number, and was soon greeted by an expected, cheery voice. A cheery voice that never ceased to annoy Declan. Declan explained his situation and asked to be picked up, trying to be as brief as possible. Declan's brother was more than happy to help, and explained that he, their sister, and other brother were actually all together back at his house for the disabling gathering. Declan tried his best to not loudly sigh into the phone, as he remembered that today was, indeed, the sibling gathering day. The the sibling gathering was a yearly tradition in Declan's family, which derived its name from the words December and sibling. And it came from the fact that Declan, his sister, and two brothers, despite being born a few years apart, all happened to be born in the month of December. Even stranger, three of the four of them had their birthdays on consecutive days, going from Declan's sister to eldest brother to younger brother, all over the span of three days. Declan's birthday was much later in the month, but nonetheless, growing up, the sibling gathering was usually thought of as the main event of all the kids in their family becoming a year older. There was always a lot of preparation, as would be expected for such an event, but for Declan, it was pretty much just a big party where he didn't get any presents. And by the time his birthday rolled around, it pretty much felt like an afterthought. Sure, his parents always got him something, and they always had a cake, and sang the birthday song, and yada yada, but it was pretty sad compared to the sibling gathering. However, this kind of stuff just came with the territory of being the black sheep in the family. Declan was for sure the odd one out, and his whole family knew it. There were disagreements galore in their house, and it usually revolved around him. But that was just childhood stuff. They were all adults now, with their own lives. And Declan liked the separation. He really didn't enjoy his siblings' company. They were so upbeat and extroverted, and he found it annoying. Plus, it seemed he and his siblings couldn't find common ground or interest anywhere between the things they did. But on his own, Declan could absorb himself in the one thing that brought him joy, working with tea at his tea cafe. And he could be his introverted, boring, somewhat sour self without his siblings constantly misunderstanding and thinking they need to somehow cheer him up. But alas, these things were still something Declan had to endure once in a while whenever there was a family gathering. One of which being the the sibling gathering. Declan's siblings had insisted on keeping the tradition alive even into their adulthood because they felt it was a good way to connect and remember old times. Things had changed, of course. The original three days were now shortened to just one, and while it was still in December, the exact date moved every year to fall on a weekend when they all didn't need to work. There was no big party or present giving. It was just a day for the four of them to be together and catch up with each other's lives over coffee and sweets. It was a delightful little holiday, or at least it was for 75% of its participants. For Declan, it was just a chore. He wasn't a chatty sharing type like his siblings. He didn't share pretty much any of the same interests, and he sure as heck did not like coffee. So usually he managed to find some excuse to skip it, including this year. But of course, the day when he gets a flat tire would be the day of the sibling gathering. There was no getting around it now, with his car broken down and no other way to get around than in his brother's car, he was about to make an unexpected addition to the sibling gathering. When they arrived at his brother's house, Declan braced himself as he walked inside. Sure enough, there they were, his incredibly positive sister who just never seemed to take a hint, and his younger brother who had a habit of rambling on and on about random little meticulous things that related to his various hobbies. And they were now reunited with Mr. Makes Everything Sound More Important Than It Really Is, who had driven Declan to this place. All of them began talking to Declan, joking about the flat tire, saying it's really been too long since they were all together, and eventually ending with a unanimous question of, so, how has everything been? Declan stood there, looking from sibling to sibling, as they gave him smiles that were all too alike. He needed some tea. The day carried on pretty miserably for Declan. He sat in an armchair with a cup of chamomile and stewed as his siblings carried on with their constant chatter. 
He was just about halfway through his second cup of tea when his phone rang. It was one of Declan's employees. More specifically, it was the employee he was counting on to be available on the day, after both of his other employees were going to have to be off due to unexpected emergencies. But when Declan picked up the phone, the woman on the other side sounded incredibly sick. She explained that she had caught the flu and wouldn't be able to come into work the following day. After they ended their call, Declan sank deeper into his armchair as his already rainy cloud of an aura became a full-on downpour. It was only after a good two minutes that Declan realized his siblings were still in the same room and they were all looking at him. And expectantly, his sister started to ask, Is there something wrong? Yes, there's something wrong! Declan snapped. Of course there's something wrong! There's always something wrong! Even when you think something is finally going right, it's really going wrong, so why the hell would you even ask that? All three of Declan's siblings looked back at him, surprised and quite confused by their brother's outburst. Even Declan had to mentally squint at the logic behind what he had just said when he thought about it. But he wasn't thinking. He had just reached his limit. Declan was hardly ever one to yell. He found it too tiring and pointless. But at the moment, he was just too annoyed, angry, and now crushed to hold it in. So it didn't really matter what he had said. Look, I just can't deal with this right now, Declan began. Clearly, we live in two completely different realities, and right now, mine is about to go down the tubes. So if you'll excuse me, I need to go figure out how I'm going to run my cafe tomorrow on the most important day in the history of its existence without any employees. Declan picked himself up and let himself out of his brother's house before anyone could say anything more. It did seem immature and tantrum-ish to just unload a rant like that out of nowhere and then storm out. And Declan wasn't going to lie to himself. The rant part was. But after the deed was done, he really was not in the mood for what he knew would come next. Ever since they were young kids, Declan's siblings had always made fun of his obsession with mixing and brewing tea. And as they grew older, they were nothing but discouraging when it came to his idea of opening a tea cafe, always telling him it would never work and he'd be better off doing something else. And the last thing he needed to add to his current stack of anger and annoyance was for him to hear an I told you so slip from his siblings' mouths. Declan looked up as he reached the sidewalk in front of his brother's house, and then it hit him. He was going to have to walk 10 miles to get back to his place. Well, Declan thought, nothing like a three-hour walk to let off some steam. At least he wore gloves and a hat today. Declan woke up before the sun rose the next morning. He knew he would need to get up even earlier than normal if he was going to have to walk to work. As he got ready, his mind raced with how he was possibly going to run his shop alone, especially on a day like today. But he just couldn't cancel. Today was the day. Declan threw on his coat and left his house into the cold wintry twilight and began walking towards his tea cafe. A very popular food and drink blogger named Rebmeked Reviews was flying in to spend his birthday vacation back in his hometown which just so happened to be Declan's hometown and the same town his tea shop was in. Thinking back, Declan could clearly remember how surprised he was when he got an email from Reb Mekid, or Reb for short, saying he and his team would be flying over and they wanted to visit a bunch of little restaurants and cafes that weren't around when Reb used to live there. And after a quick search, they had found Declan's tea cafe and thought it would be an interesting place to visit. Declan very nearly spit out his new tea blend he was tasting at the time, but thankfully the new brew was delicious enough for him to keep his lips shut. A semi-famous blogger who was from his town, a tiny backwoods town known for coffee, had somehow chosen Declan's Tea Cafe as a place to visit. What Declan found equally if not more surprising was that Reb had somehow managed to find and navigate Declan's oaf of a website and still wanted to visit. Honestly, if there were two things Declan hated, it was coffee and computers. This whole situation was nothing less than an act of the divine. And if it went well, it would mean his cafe would go from tiny backwoods unknown tea shop to a well-known tiny backwoods tea shop. The publicity would for sure boost his sales, especially among the locals. Rebmeked was the only semi-famous person to ever come out of their small town, so most everyone in town knew about him and read his blog. And with Declan's tea shop not picking up customers fast enough, this was an event that couldn't have come at a better time. Well, at least that's how it seemed for a while. But now that all three of his employees had coincidentally been deemed out of commission, it seemed this opportunity was about to slip through the cracks. It was a small shop that didn't need too many hands. And on any other day, Declan knew he could get by alone. 
But since this was part of Rebmeket's birthday, he was going to be bringing his family and friends along with him. Plus, as a reviewer, he would probably be asking to see quite a few items. Plus, service is always a big part of reviews. He couldn't see any way he was even going to be able to prepare everything, never mind get everything out to the people in a timely manner. Not to mention, Declan wasn't exactly the best waiter. He was a sour guy and he knew it. Which is why he usually stayed in the back and did what he did best, brew delicious tea. This day was going to be a disaster, with a capital D. Declan looked up ahead and was able to see his cafe just as the sun was starting to color the sky blue. Even in this state of practical panic, the sight of his little tea shop always brought a slight sense of warmth to his heart. This was his passion. As silly and ridiculous as everyone seemed to see it as, tea was Declan's life. It was where he was happy. And as hopeless as it seemed, there was no way he was about to let an opportunity like today go without trying. But as he got closer, he noticed a few figures standing around the front door of his cafe. He was too far away to see who they were, but it was way too early for anyone from Reb's party to be there. He kept on eyeballing and squinting to figure out who they were as he continued to walk closer. But even before he could make out their faces, he realized who they were after seeing an all too familiar car parked outside that now had a new tire. It was his siblings. Why were they outside his cafe at the crack of dawn? Declan had not a clue, but all he knew was he really, really did not have the time or the headspace to deal with them right now. He thought about his options as he continued to close the distance. He could walk right past them, ignoring their existence until they leave, but after about half a second of thinking, the idea sounded much too schoolgirlish. And after the rant walkout combo he pulled yesterday, it was time he started acting his age. Aggressively telling them to beef off should work. Yeah much more mature. Satisfied with the solution, Declan picked up the speed a little. He saw his siblings notice him, and he was so ready to tell them off. But right as he walked up to them, and right before he could get a word out, all three of his siblings held up a piece of paper to their faces, each with the same short sentence scribbled on in black marker. It read, We are your employees for the day. With finger pointed and mouth nearly open, Declan paused, and after a moment he just said, What? His siblings lowered their signs, and his sister repeated the words. We're your employees for the day. Again, what? Declan shot back. You mentioned yesterday that you had no employees for today. And, well, it sounded like today was pretty important, so we figured we'd help you out instead. Declan blinked a few times, trying to understand what his sister was telling him. Don't you guys have your own jobs you need to go to? Declan asked, still not quite understanding the situation, but rolling with it anyway. Don't worry about that, Dee, Declan's older brother said. This is more important. Besides, we all had a bunch of accumulated vacation days. Eh, well, actually, I didn't have to go to work today anyway, Declan's younger brother said before his sister shoved him. They were all still like a bunch of kids. After it finally soaked into Declan that his siblings were being serious, he tried to explain the situation. Uh... Look, you don't understand. We don't need to understand, his sister cut in. We're just here to help you with whatever you need. Just tell us what to do and we'll do it. At least the best as we can, his brother added with a laugh. Declan was pretty much in shock. This was absolutely not what he was expecting today, or any other day really. But before he could totally start getting sentimental, his younger brother tapped his watch. Tick tock, the sun's going to be up soon and you haven't even shown us our aprons yet, bro. If we're gonna do this, I think we had better get a move on. He was right. There wasn't any time to fool around. Declan may have three employees now, but they have no clue what they're doing. If they had any chance of pulling this off, he was going to have to teach and they were going to have to learn very, very quickly. And so they all rushed inside, tied on their aprons, and got to work. The first few hours were difficult and frustrating for everyone. As they all came to realize, Declan was not a great teacher. But he was a good doer, so after watching Declan do everything a few times, his siblings started to get the hang of it. Declan was not going to let any of them near the brewing station, as that took too much… finesse. But when it came to everything else, organizing the dishes, setting up the dining area, and so on, they were more efficient than Declan first thought they'd be. And he also soon found his younger brother had a knack for making pastries. He was precise and meticulous with the measurements, probably due to all the handwork hobbies he did. And so by noontime, the tea shop was up and running and ready to receive. 
Reb Meked and his party arrived right on time, and after the hellos and welcomes, it was time for business. And almost immediately, Declan noticed that boy did his older brother make a surprisingly good waiter. His talent of making things sound way more important than they were, a habit that usually annoyed the hell out of Declan, came in very, very handy when it came to explaining the different drinks to customers. He made each of them sound so enticing and delicious, which was incredibly surprising since Declan's brother didn't like tea at all. But before long, Declan was busy in the kitchen brewing up all kinds of teas. Hot, iced, fruity, herbal, you name it. And Declan's sister was a perfect all-around helper. If they needed a hand with something, she was there. And when she wasn't needed in the kitchen, she was out talking with the folks who occupied the cafe. Apparently, most people found her positive attitude quite pleasant. Declan had to shrug his shoulders at that one. To each his own, he guessed. Right as that thought passed through his head, Declan had to take a moment and stopped his tea mixing. To each his own, Declan quietly said out loud. Why was that something he had never said before? He continued mixing his tea spices as he thought about it. Before that moment, he never really believed in to each his own. He never even thought about it. His whole life had been so full of me and them. They were like this and he was like that. They all could never get along because of their differences, or more specifically, because of the fact that they never even tried to work with their differences. They were all so stubborn, he and his siblings, Declan thought. That was probably the one thing they all did have in common. Each of them was always so sure they were right. And if someone was wrong, then they needed to change. And after years of never being able to change each other, that notion just turned from they're wrong and they need to change into they're wrong and that makes them ridiculous. That idea hasn't gone anywhere, and Declan would be kidding himself if he thought it would be anytime soon. They were ridiculous. But maybe that was okay. Declan could tell just by looking at his siblings that even after a whole day of working in his tea shop, they still didn't get it. They didn't get the shop, they didn't get tea, and they still didn't get Declan. And yet, they were here, doing everything they could to help him. Maybe that was the missing piece all this time. He had all but convinced himself that since he didn't like his family, he was, in some way, not a part of it. Declan set the perfectly blended spiced chai on the counter and rang the orders up bell. When his sister came to pick it up, she asked Declan to come out because Reb wanted to talk to him. Oh dear, this could either be really good or really bad, Declan thought. He brushed off his apron, walked out to the table area, and scanned the packed room. There were more people in his little cafe than he had ever seen on one day. And boy, did he not like crowds. After some more looking, he spotted his sister talking to a man who was roughly in his thirties. And when his sister spotted Declan, she nudged the man towards him. It was Reb. Okay, keep it cool, keep it cool, Declan thought. Reb walked up to Declan, held up his glass, looked at Declan for a few moments, and then smiled wide and told Declan it was the best darn glass of tea he had ever had in his life. Declan discreetly eyed his sister, who gave him the haha eyebrows. It was usually a very, very annoying habit of hers. But right now, Declan was all too surprised and pleased to find it to be. So instead, he just thanked Reb and they exchanged a handshake. Reb continued and said Declan's place was for sure getting a Rebulicious rating on his blog, which was the equivalent of five stars. And at that, Declan couldn't help but light up. The day had gone just as he had hoped, but in the weirdest way possible. Either way, his tea shop would stay alive he would be able to continue doing what he loved. His smile reached up to his eyes, and no amount of his siblings nudging each other and pointing at him in surprise of seeing their brother grinning was going to stop it. After another handshake, Reb walked back to his party, and still smiling, Declan looked over to his siblings, who were all laughing and giving him the thumbs up. He didn't feel an ounce of annoyance towards them. In fact, the way he felt reminded him of when they were all in grade school, back before anything other than playing tag really mattered. Back before he felt different, when he still felt part of their family. And simultaneously, he also felt stupid. Stupid that it took him so, so long just to realize something so simple about family. And that was, just because they're ridiculous doesn't mean you can't still care. It doesn't mean you don't still want them to be happy. It doesn't mean you stop being family. Because family, as Declan found, was a weird, powerful, and funny thing. It was the one thing in the world that you didn't need to like in order to love.
Declan looked around at all the happy faces that filled his little tea cafe, and it seemed, with a combination as weird, powerful, and funny like that, it could produce nothing but prosperity. And that is a wrap! wrap you put the thing inside the tortilla you wrap it up it's wrapped hello i'm zakira and thank you for listening to my story of december if you don't already know this video is part 12 of 12 in a monthly series i did for 2018 where every month i attempted to create a character based off of that month as well as write a little story for them so you just listened to the very last one uh december story and i'll have the playlist that has all 12 stories and illustrations linked up in the card as well as in the description box so if you want to check them out or if you ever missed any months or if you just want to re-listen to your favorite uh, you can go and do that but for now it's time for the chatty part of this video and also just wanted to say that if my voice sounds a little weird in this video it's because I have been sick these past few days I was literally sick like a couple weeks ago and then over Christmas I managed to catch yet another cold uh, so I tried my best to narrate the story without sounding too congested or weird but please bear with me if it still does a bit y'all have no idea the amount of coughs I had to cut out <laughs> in the editing so when it came to the inspiration for December's story the word or meaning for the month was prosperity and for most of the year, I had actually planned on having December's story revolve around family. Because I feel, uh, for me, and I'm sure for many of you as well, December tends to have a lot to do with family. It's the time of the year with all those winter holidays and gatherings, and we are around our families a lot. And I felt it would also be a perfect end to this series because... I'm a sentimental schmuck. <laughs> and family is one of those beautiful sentimental things because it's never perfect, no family is, but when it finds a way to work itself out, it can be one of the most valuable and beautiful and prosperous things. When it came to the character of Declan, I wanted him to be kind of a sour, bitter guy for a few reasons. One, because none of the characters in this series, uh, none of the other characters really are. Uh, sour or bitter uh, so I thought it would be different and fun and two gotta admit I was for sure influenced by like the classic Christmas tales about grumpy dudes who have their heart warmed through the beauty and spirit of the holidays except of course this story didn't really revolve around any actual holiday but I couldn't resist making a Grinch character for December come on now, writing him, however, was a different story. <laughs> Declan was actually one of the hardest characters for me to write, uh, because I guess he's just so different than I am, personality-wise, so it was hard for me to find that commonality to work with, like, it was just really hard for me to put myself in his shoes. And, you know, like, I kept cringing, like, every time I had to write parts when he's, like, mentally insulting his siblings and like I'm like dude you're so mean <laughs> but it was also a really fun character to work with because of that fact and as I discovered more about his backstory I started to get a grasp of who he was better and it became a pretty fun story to tell this story is also one of if not the longest story of the 12 it is nearly 4,000 words long and I didn't plan to make the last story the longest but it just happened to come out that way, so, you know, accidental long finale right there. Overall, I quite like the story. As I mentioned in a previous monthly character video, I like when these stories can have a lot of uh, action, you know, just things physically going on. Uh, and there was quite a bit of that in this story, you know, with them going from house to house and walking in the tea shop and whatever, so... And, and, and plus, I, I love tea. So there you go. As for the illustration, the birthstone for the month was blue topaz. The flowers for the month were daffodil, nar nar narcissus, narcissus, nar narcissus, and holly. And the colors for the month were indigo, green, and greenish blue. So that th this was one of the weirdest combinations to work with because. On all the other months, I managed to find either a variety of the flowers given that were the same colors as the colors of the month, 
or just managed to find some way where it works. But this month, like, daffodils are yellow. <laughs> and narcissuses, they're, they're, they're basically daffodils. They just, they, they look a little bit different. So, like, there was no getting around it. It's either white or yellow. And uh, some of the narcissuses, I really, I, I, I don't know how to say this name, man. They come in some other warm colors like red and orange and pink. But, bro, greenish blue and indigo. It's pretty different. So I definitely had to rely a lot on the hollies to bring those colors in by putting a bunch of those distinct jagged, you know, holly leaves. And I tried to tie in the warmer colors too by having one bunch of holly that already had those distinct red ripe berries. And the other bunch is still in its flowering stage. And also the zodiac signs for the month are Sagittarius and Capricorn. Overall, I like Declan's design. He came out the way I sort of envisioned and wanted him to. Uh, he's another character that is on the slightly older side compared to most of the other monthly characters who are in their teens and 20s. Uh, and he's also the only guy with a beard. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bet none of y'all have seen Zakir draw a beard. I mean, I don't purposefully avoid drawing beards, but... Admittedly, I've come to realize that I pretty much never do. I don't know why, but you know, couldn't end 2018 without drawing a beard, so there you go. And overall, I like the illustration. I think the colors managed to work well together, and I feel it does look like December. Uh, probably thanks a lot to the holly, because that, like, the moment you see that, you're like, ah, Christmas. But I like it nonetheless. And as for the play on names, yes, very important. It's it's pretty bad this month. <laughs> I couldn't really find any names uh, that played on the word December, so I settled for one that started with DEC, thus Declan. Uh, but I wasn't about to end this series on a month that doesn't include, like, December in the names. Okay, so, Reb Mekid. Reb Mekid is December spelled backwards. How many of y'all picked up on that, I wonder? <laughs> Overall, I'm quite happy with how this last part uh, of the series went. And no lie, it was the hardest month to make out of all 12. No joke. As you guys probably know, I've been super busy with getting my book made, so this entire month has been non-stop work on that. And then I got sick twice, so I didn't have time to write or draw until December 27th. That's right. I came up with the character, wrote the story, drew the illustration, and put together this video over the span of four days. <laughs> I'm still kind of trying to realize myself that I somehow managed to do that because like even if I was at my 100% and didn't have other things to work on, that would still be a crazy difficult deadline to do. <laughs> so when I got sick for the second time, it was pretty much like a sure thing. Like, yep, I was about to fail this challenge on the last month. And I was so not happy about that. Like, some might even say angry. But it's here, somehow. <laughs> and I'm so freaking happy. Like, seriously, this challenge one of the biggest accomplishments of 2018 for me. It was so hard, but I did it. And I'm so proud of myself, like I really am. Now, last month I left you guys on a cliffhanger about what I'm planning to do with this series now that it's over. And so it's, it's time to talk about it. I've mentioned and there have been suggestions from you guys about making a calendar or making a book. And that's gonna happen, but not this year. Yeah, that was a uh, how to how to uh, unhype you guys there. <laughs> I had considered putting this all together this year, but something really cool and unexpected happened called Zig's Journey, and I decided to make that into a book. So that meant there wouldn't be enough time to put together the monthly character series items before the end of the year. So it was kind of a hard decision especially because I'm very impatient. <laughs> but in the end, I figured the best thing to do is to wait until the end of next year to release the calendar and book. 
because I do want them to come out at a similar time and calendars kind of need to be ready before the start of a new year. So instead of this project having a 2019 calendar, it's going to be a 2020 calendar. And the book uh, with all 12 stories should be coming out at the same time uh, in sometime in the last third or last quarter of next year. And I realized that that will actually be the best thing because that gives me the whole year or most of the year at least to actually put together the book and the calendar. Like the stories need to be edited and formatted and so forth. So this will give me the time to really make it the best it can be without having to rush everything on such a short deadline, which boy has 2018 been full of. <laughs> and honestly, if next year goes as fast as this year has, then that book and calendar will be here in no time. So I hope that sounds kind of interesting and I hope you guys will look forward to that. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to thank everyone who has listened to these stories all year and shown so much support. It always meant so much to me to read your guys' comments and know that there are people who enjoy these stories or are even inspired by them in any way. You guys really helped me to keep me going and getting these stories written every month, even on those, you know, super short deadlines and barely getting the video up every month. Uh, but it was so much fun and I'm just so glad that you guys enjoyed it. I actually wanted to make a separate video talking about this project like as a whole and uh, what it was like to do something like this for a whole year uh, because I learned a lot from this project and I think it would be helpful or at least interesting to share the experience in more depth so if that's something you guys would like to see let me know because uh, I probably will be making that video. And this video is probably already horrendously long but uh, I just wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. I hope you guys had a wonderful 2018 and thank you for letting me be a part of it in some small way through these YouTube videos. 2018 has been so fun and crazy for me and I'm really looking forward to whatever will come in 2019, including sending out my book, uh, Zig's Journey. I can't wait for that. You know, still, still gotta keep you guys updated on that. It's still, still working on it. Still working. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss out on what I upload. I make new videos every week, usually uploading on Sundays, but sometimes I upload away from the schedule. If you'd like to follow me on social media, all the links to that are in the description box where you can follow me for daily updates. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See you all next year.